This is a half of a bowl of corundum, uh, lab created corundum, red corundum, ruby, which was created uh, using the flame fusion method. This is the way um, the, the flame fusion method creates uh, bowls. Again, this is half. But for corundum, because there's pressure inside the bowl when it's created, uh, they have to be split. So you, you just, for corundum lab created flame fusion, you get half a bowl. If it's uh, spinel, you can get an entire bowl. Or if it's uh, flame fusion quartz, you can get a whole bowl. But for this, it's a half a bowl. And this uh, bowl I got uh, at the Franklin uh, Frolic, which is up in Franklin, North Carolina every year, hosted by the United States Fasteners Guild. And this was a door prize, so the cost was free. So it's a uh, ruby color, it's ruby corundum. Corundum is uh, ruby, unless it's blue, then it's sapphire. So I'm gonna cut this ruby using the spellbound design. And for the spellbound design, the length, uh, the width is, and length, the length is 1.25 times the width. The width of our ruby half bowl is about 24, 25 millimeters. But for the spellbound design, you need a height of 1.066 of the width. You find this in the H to W ratio given in the cutting information. So I'm going to trim off a nice piece of this half bowl for some future project and not use it for the spellbound design. I'll trim a, a piece of this half bowl at about, about 30 millimeters in length. So a nice 25 by 30-ish piece of rough for a future project. I'll need to find a good design with a shallow height to width ratio for that project. My trim saw made quick work of this end piece of the bowl. It's now about 25 by 30 millimeters, but it's only about 12 millimeters deep, which is normally pretty deep, but not for the spellbound design. So I'll use this piece in a future uh, gemstone, so stay tuned. Again, this piece of rough won't work for the spellbound design because again, the spellbound has a height to width ratio of 1.066. So the best I can get using a spellbound design with this half bowl is a gemstone, something less than uh, 12 millimeters wide because it's about 12 millimeters deep and about 18 millimeters long. And again, that comes from the length to width ratio, which are also found in the instructions. And for the spellbound design, the length is 1.5 times the width. So a width of 12 millimeters would require a length of 1.5 times 12 or about 18 millimeters. So I'll trim a smaller piece uh, off the remainder of this half bowl uh, to fit those dimensions for this spellbound uh, project. So this is the piece of uh, lab created corundum that I'm gonna use, Ruby, for our project. And the next step is to grind this flat uh, with one of my rougher laps. Since it's corundum, I can use a 100 series lap without any problem. So I'll probably just use a 100, uh, 100, 100 series, I think it's 110 or 120 grit topper and grind a flat spot to attach our dop to. So this is a 120 grit topper and I'm gonna use that to grind a flat spot. Um, I wouldn't use a 100 series lap on a lot of my gemstones because it can cause internal structure damage, internal cracks that you won't notice until later in the in the cutting. But corundum is such a hard material it won't give it any problem. It'll put some nice scratches on the uh, flat spot that'll, uh, micro scratches that'll help uh, the dop adhere to the stone. So I just do it by hand. You get a nice drip going. I put a sponge in the, my drip tray because I've got the uh, top down so I can show you what I'm doing. And that helps prevent the water from splashing out. And then just by hand. So 
I've got a little bit further to go and uh, just a little bit more to get a flat spot. Okay. So now I'm ready to uh, attach the uh, gemstone to our dot. Okay, so to put our stone in the uh, altar tech, you want the uh, stone in the dot lengthwise. This uh, design has a length that's 1.5 times the width. So we want lengthwise at the uh, 72 and 24 teeth and the top and the bottom at the 48 and 96 tooth. So normally the diagrams will show you at the 96, but I flip it to the 48 often and it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, the only reason I do that is so that when I'm tightening up this uh, DOP retention screw on my machine, at the 48 puts it on the top and it's just easier to reach when it's on the top than when it's on the bottom and you're trying to put your dop in there. So once we uh, put the stone in the dop, put the dop in the machine, we're ready to start cutting our ruby. So because I have a lot of material to move, and this is corundum, which is one of the hardest materials there is. It's not as hard as diamond, but it's harder than most everything else. I'm gonna use a 100 series uh, topper. This is a 120 grit topper, but now, as you buy them, pretty much anything in the 100 series is all about the same once it starts wearing out. Now, this lap's not perfectly flat. Kind of wobbles a little bit when I put it in my machine. And I set it on top of my flattest lap using a kind of a, you can buy a master lap, but I already have my uh, ceramic lap and that's the flattest lap I have. So I use that as my master. Put the topper on top of that. And we're ready to start cutting our stone and you can see or you can feel it's not quite perfectly flat but at the hundred at the hundred grit level that doesn't make any difference so now we'll start cutting our spellbound and here is Jeff's spellbound design the creator of this design Jeff Ronimus he can be reached on Facebook that's where I normally find him so if you have any questions you want to thank him for the design or ask him any questions about it you might be able to contact him on Facebook uh, note that I previously created a two-part video explaining all the parts of a gem fasting diagram. So if you have any questions about these cutting instructions, like the H to W ratio or the L to W ratio, or any of the other ratios or instructions, you can go to those videos and learn all about how to read the instructions. And here's a link. After using my 120 grit topper to preform my ruby, I went to my 340 grit topper to preform the girdle, setting it at the, pretty close to the length of width that I needed. And, and I cut the rest of the, of the stone. So uh, then I used my 600 grit topper to cut the first row of facets, which form a point or a culet on the bottom of the gemstone. And I won't touch those facets with any other laps um, because with this, when I finished it with the 600 grit, they're now called frosted, that's what we call frosted facets. And that's what makes the spellbound design unique. So those facets are done. There's a second set of facets, which makes every other facet on the culet. Now the first one's frosted, the next one's polished. So I went ahead and polished those facets, um, went from the 600 grit uh, to 8,000 grit diamond on a zinc lap, and then 50,000 grit diamond on a bat lap, and I polished those facets. There's a couple more facets along the side and tops, lengthwise and, and widthwise, that I do need to cut and polish, but the main facets are now done, cut and polished, with the alternating facets being polished and frosted for that special effect of the spellbound design. I finished polishing up the bottom half for the pavilion of our gemstone. I used uh, a bat lap with 60,000 grit diamond on it and uh, 
Now I'll transfer our stone so we can cut the upper half. Okay, so when you put the uh, stone back in the machine after you transfer, so you're ready to cut the upper half of the stone, you put it on this a flat piece of metal. In this case, Altertech gives it, comes with the Altertech machine. And you set your index at 90 degrees. And what you're trying to do is set the stone so that when you raise it, the stone breaks the plane all along that flat piece of metal at the same time. That's when you're in alignment. If it was a little bit off, you know, well that's way off, but a little bit off, it wouldn't break the plane at the same time. So that's when you're in, in alignment and you're ready to cut the upper half. Now the other thing I do is I set the index. You can set it at the 96 or the 48. I set it at the 48 again as I told you earlier because the DOP retention screw is right here and it's just easier to reach that with my Allen wrench when it's on the top then rather than on the bottom. So now we're ready to cut the upper half of our stone. I polished the upper half of our ruby here with a uh, 60,000 grit diamond on a bat lap and I ran my Ultratech fast. Mm -hmm. Normally when I'm polishing I run real slow. For some stones I'll keep the lap stable off, turned off and just slide the stone over it to polish some facets or get out some scratches. But in the case of corundum, sometimes you better just run it fast. So I ran it uh, uh, at 10, I guess that's 1,000 RPMs. My Ultratech goes from 1 to 16, which I think is 1,600 RPMs. So I ran it at 1,000 RPMs, very fast, and that uh, did a great job of polishing it up. So now I'll set the stone up and cut and polish the table. The uh, table, not being very big, polished right up with my 60,000 grit diamond on a bat lap. And again, I ran, uh, I ran my Ultratech at uh, very high speed, 1,000 RPMs. Polished it right up, so now I will soak our stone in the acetone uh, to remove it from the dop, weigh it, measure it, and send it off to Bopi. I think she's going to really like it. Today I cut a piece of man-made ruby into Jeff's spellbound design. I had won this ruby rough at the United States Fasters Guild annual get together in Franklin, North Carolina, which occurs every summer. So come on up next year and, uh, and maybe you'll get some door prizes. I trimmed off a large piece of the half bowl for a future project. And then I trimmed off a second smaller piece of the half bowl for this spellbound design. And again, that's because the spellbound design is a deep design where you need the rough to be as high or deep as it is wide. Uh, this design works for well for this type of rough, and it also works uh, well for rough that's a lighter shade. And this is ruby is a lighter shade of ruby. So this design works great for this piece of rough. When polishing this corundum, I did run my gem cutting machine at a very high speed, about 1,000 RPM. Normally, when I'm polishing gemstones, I find it works better to run the lap at a slow speed, something like 300 RPM. Sometimes I have the lap stationary and just slide the stone over to polish it. But corundum, ruby and sapphire are the exception. The design is not difficult to cut, but I would not recommend this design as one of the first one, two, or even the first four or five stones that a new cutter cuts. As frosting a gemstone is a technique that, in my opinion, I'd put off learning until you have a few gemstones under your belt. But it's up to you. And not all cutters like frosting gemstones at all. Uh, and not all cutters like cutting lab-created rough. So as a cutter, it's to each their own. Whatever you like to cut, you cut. Uh, as a cutter, you get to decide what designs to cut and what material to cut. Just enjoy. Personally, I like the way this design look, looks in this light material. And uh, I plan to cut it again. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you think of the design and of this gemstone. And as always, happy fasting, everyone. Mm -hmm.